If you got started in model railroading around the turn of the millennium, then this locomotive probably needs no introduction. The IHC 260 Mogul was a lot of people's first model steam locomotive, and it was a very common sight on HO scale layouts from the early 90s into the late 2000s. I got my first one around the age of six, and since then I've owned several of them. However, my last one kicked the bucket a few years ago, so I recently went on eBay and purchased this minty fresh specimen to find out if these are really as good as I remember. Like most IHC models, the 260 was actually an updated version of an older model, in this case a tender drive train set engine sold by Pemco as far back as 1980. Also like most IHC models, it was manufactured by Mahano in Slovenia. Although the IHC version had a new motor and was no longer tender drive, everything else was pretty much the same as the old Pemco model. They were available until 2009, when IHC went out of business. Amazingly, there are very few clues that most of this model is over 40 years old. Most of the boiler piping is molded on, but there's quite a few separately applied parts as well, and the detailing is at least as good as some similar models available today. <coughs> Bachman! The cab interior has fantastic detail as well, which is pretty rare on models that sold. All things considered, it's aged spectacularly well. Now, before you open eBay in another tab and drop a hundred of your hard-earned beans on one of these, you should know that they do have a few quirks. The most common problem is the motors. Of the ones I've owned, about half of them ran smooth and quiet, and the other half sounded like a coffee grinder going down the tracks. The later production runs had a different motor that ran much smoother and quieter, and that's obviously the one you want, but unfortunately, there's no reliable way to tell which ones have the good motors without testing them. If you must buy one online, look for the purple box, as those are from a later production run than the old yellow boxes and are more likely to have the good motors. The prototype for this model was the Southern Pacific M4 class Mogul. These were 75 ton fast freight locomotives built around 1900. 153 were built in total, but most of them were scrapped in the 50s. At least two still survive, although not in working condition. Now, although this particular model was already one of the nicest ones on eBay when I bought it, I decided it needed a little bit of sprucing up. The first thing I did was swap in one of the better motors from a spare chassis I had from one of the purple box engines. And now, this is probably the best running example I've ever seen. Next, I added my usual white wall striping on the drivers with a paint pen, as shown in my decorating a steam locomotive video, and also painted over the exposed brass axle ends. I darkened the recessed areas in the side rods by going over them with a black sharpie and then scraping the excess off the raised bits with a shop towel wrapped around a screwdriver. I also used a black sharpie on the faces of the tender wheel to get rid of that bright, unrealistic shine. Next, I turned my attention to the wiring. Obviously, I wanted to put DCC in this model, but it's too old to have one of those quick plug sockets, so I had to hardwire the decoder in. This involved a lot of thin little wires and some tricky soldering, but I got it all to work. I also replaced the headlight bulb with an LED, and the hardest part of this entire project was getting the thin little wires rooted correctly through the boiler. However, after a long night of silent cursing and dropping the tweezers on the floor, I got it all wired up, and it all works. To finish it off, I got rid of the truck-mounted horn hook coupler in the rear, and added a body-mounted knuckle coupler on a 3D printed bracket. I also pulled out the fake coupler from the front of the engine and glued a plastic knuckle coupler in its place. I liked the colors of the factory paint job, so the only thing I actually repainted was the sides of the tender. I did the lettering with a brother label maker as usual, which isn't really the best way to do it, but it is by far the easiest way to do it, and I think it looks good enough. And with that, Westport and Shelter Cove number 15 was complete. I'm still amazed at how good this thing looks and how little cosmetic improvement it took to make it fit right in with the rest of my fleet. It's now one of my favorite engines that I own. And although I probably will continue to detail it and improve the paintwork over time, I'm really happy with how it looks right now. Whether you're nostalgic for the early 1900s or the early 2000s, the IHC 260 still delivers.